Welcome to another episode of the Valorant Tips and Tricks sent by you series. The series where I show Valorant Tips and Tricks that you guys sent to me. It's been about this last episode, about one month ago. But that's good, I was saving all the nice tricks and cool mechanics for this episode. Like this Gecko Flash mechanic. Did you know that when you use your flash it will actually do splash damage on the enemy? Everyone who is standing inside of the splash effect will get flashed. So enemies can't hide behind each other and if you or a teammate is standing next to an enemy you also will get flashed. But the cool thing is that you also can dodge the Gecko Flashes. If you are standing in front of an object for example and the enemy Gecko uses his flash too low, the flash will hit the object instead of your feet, like you see in this clip. Alternatively, if the gecko flash is too far away and too high, you can also crouch and then the flash will go over you. Pretty cool mechanic, but remember this is only as a last resort, destroying the flash is way easier. But I mean, if you hear the flash and you don't know where it is, crouch and maybe you will dodge it. Now let's talk about the doors on ascent. In the past I've showed a few ways how you can instantly destroy them. Sadly, most of these mechanics are fixed, but there's a new one. You simply have to place the killjoy alarm bolt underneath the door, and when you think the time is right, you only need one bullet and the door will break. It's an extremely nasty way to catch the enemies of guard, but keep in mind this might be bug abuse, so be careful with using it. And while we're on ascent, look at this clip. Valerian was just chilling, he was looking mid for a little bit, and then he got bored, so he did this. What did he just do? That one was insane. So tip to everyone, when you are bored at middle, just wallbang, maybe you can get a sneaky shot. Also, did you notice that? Valerian got the Valorant Tracker app installed! This app is sponsoring this part of the video and they are doing a huge giveaway. More info about that later, but first let me tell you about this app. Valorant Tracker is the app if you want to improve in Valorant and get the edge over your enemies. When you download the app, you can see tons of stats about your account. Like your kill death ratio, top agent, accuracy, and they now even have this cool stat, your tracker score. I'm scoring a B, that's not very good, let me know your score in the comments down below. You could also find other things on this app like a detailed match history, guides, weapon stats, map stats, see things on the timeline, but in my opinion the best benefit that Valorant Tracker has is the live match data. During the games you have an extra window underneath the scoreboard where you can see how many kills you get each round. But that's not all, when you hop into a game you can see all the ranks of your teammates, the enemies, the kill death ratio of them, tons of info that can help you win the game. So what I would say, download Valorant Tracker with the link in the description. It's completely free and when you download it before the end of April you could even compete in a giveaway. They are giving away a little more than 41,000 riot points split between three winners. When you open the app you see a pop-up, just click on it, enter the giveaway and good luck my friends. Now let's continue the video. Let's continue with the nice fade mechanic. If you ever play fade you know that the wolf has some trouble by getting onto high spots. Like over here on ascent, it doesn't matter where you cast your wolf but it won't be able to get onto heaven. But in fact there's a sneaky trick you can use. What you have to do is aim at the corner of this platform over here and then it will go to heaven. Easy if you want to go for a retake for example. Also for those who are wondering, your wolf will be able to go onto drop. Could be useful in some situations. Now look at this clip from Track DC. I'm, I'm not this is a very cool idea, but does it actually work? If you stand on these boxes, crouch and look down, will the enemies be able to see you? I'm gonna test it out. And look at this, it actually works. If the enemies are crouching and looking down, you won't be able to see the enemy. But if the enemy is looking directly at you, then you will be able to see the enemy. In this clip, the enemy omen keep crouching, but he's looking up and then down. You see, there's a small difference. So Trick approved, my friend, well played. When the enemy Reyna is using her dismiss and the wingman sees it, of course it will run after Reyna. But did you know that the wingman also keeps running after Reyna, even if she uses her ulti and she's completely invisible. That's a pretty overpowered mechanic, she can't even destroy the wingman. Now a new and very nasty sage wall on split. When you planted the spike on A and you want to defend it, place your wall on the stairs like this. For the enemies it looks like a semi-normal wall, it just blocks off elbow. But it's far from normal my friends, if the enemies are pushing through, you will be able to see their legs. It's a very sneaky way to get the enemies, they will have no clue where the shots are coming from. Unless they have also seen this video, but I doubt that. Now let's talk about the green gecko blob. Did you know that you can block it with your wingman? It's very easy to pull off, just activate your wingman when the blob is coming down, but it even gets better. It's harder to pull off, but you're also able to block the blob with your body. This is so OP, it means that in the post plant, if the enemy gecko is using a lineup, you can simply jump in front of it. Just look at this clip from a game I played. Ah! <laughs> Oh no! Hey, good job! Keep this in mind, all the gecko mains out there. This was a tip for playing against gecko, now a tip for the gecko mains. When you decide to use a lineup in the post plant for your green blob anyway, you have to keep watching the trailing line. This way you know exactly if your blob is landing on the spike or if the enemy is bouncing against it. Now one of my favorite segments of the series, trick shot time. Which trick shot is your favorite? The one of Novel? What? His crosshair wasn't even on his head. Or the one of Somi Ejit? Oh, 360, 360! 
Oh! Anyway, back to the tricks. Did you know that you can jump from nest all the way to the boxes over here? It looks like such a big jump, but it's actually easy peasy. Could be useful in some rounds. And while we're jumping on the ice box, some people might not know this, but if you're using the E of Neon, you can jump from belt all the way to screens without using the zip line. So next time, jump like a wild rabbit and you might catch the enemies off guard. Well played again, some idiot. But wait, there's more. Did you know that you can jump further if you use your Reina Dismiss? Apparently, it gives you just enough speed to also jump on the screens. Pathetic. Now let's talk about some strange glitches in Valorant. If you use your Brimstone Molotov on this spot over here, from the other side, it looks like your molly won't go through sewers. But apparently, even though you don't see your molly over there, the enemies will still get hit if they are standing in the corner. I don't think this tip is very useful in game, but it's good to know. Also, look at this clip. Imagine that this happens to you. I know, right? What happened over here? I have no idea, so I hopped into a custom game and tested it out myself. But sadly, or actually luckily I should say, I couldn't simulate this with Omen myself. So I hope this was a one-time glitch, but if you think you know what happened over here, let me know in the comments down below. Let's do a Gecko tricky again. When Gecko players are using their ultimate, a lot of people will just run till they see an enemy. But this is often not the best thing you can do. If you don't see any enemies, consider just going back to yourself and then use your ulti. This way you make it very easy for yourself to pick your ultimate up and use it again in the same round. One big warning though, of course, don't stun yourself or your teammates. That would be very dumb, but you are a pro player and you're not gonna do that, right? By now you should know that you could throw your nuns from on these boxes over here to hit the enemy standing in heaven. I mean, it's an older trick. I showed it a few times. But did you know that you could do the same thing on the other side? Here's how it works. Go all the way to this corner, crouch and aim at the edge of the brick. Do a right click throw and it will land on the small pipe over there. The reason why this lineup could be good is to hit the enemy standing in this nasty corner over here. And if you want to take it to the next level, you could also do this. After you plant the spike, throw your nuns from on the spot Go to a main and use your ulti when the enemies are about to enter the site. The enemies might run into that corner and when your ultimate almost goes off, activate your Nana's farm and easy kills for you. The last thing about this one, if you play with low settings, the brick is a bit harder to see, but if you look closely, you can still find the brick, my friends. Now it's time to fly to Icebox for an insane combo that you can use. With Sage in the tube, instead of placing your wall vertical like almost every Sage is doing, place it horizontal, like this. What, Mr. Lowlander? Why should you do that? Now the enemy only has to destroy one segment. Well, my friends, if you have a teammate Omen, he can teleport all on your wall. The reason why this is good is that he can teleport without the enemy seeing him and then he can peek to the right to get the enemies. Shout out to Zodiac Gods, this is how it will look like in the game. Who's next? Hey, Pretty dope right and if you feel risky you can jump further on the tube and easy kills. <laughs> Remaining. Now let's talk about these boxes on Lotus. There's something strange about it. When you jump in crouch mid air, you can jump on the ledge of the box. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to be on this spot. Luckily, I don't think it's a game breaking bug, but I mean, it's an SD red spot if you get an enemy like this. By reading the comments, I know that most of you guys always forget the lineups that I show during these videos. So let's make a deal. I'm gonna show you two lineups that are so simple that you won't forget them. But if you ever forget them, you come back to this video and you subscribe. First one, a gecko lineup on the default plant spot on A side icebox. You just gotta stand against this wall and aim at the top corner of the pillar. See, this one is not very hard to remember and it lands perfectly on site. But this one is even simpler to remember. Stand against these boxes and aim at the top spike of the explosion in the air. When you throw your gecko molly, it will cover the whole backside of generator, so perfect if you want to take a side. Enemies standing behind gen have to run away and peek you. Bonus, from the same spot, instead of aiming at the top spike, you could also aim at the other spike. When you now throw your molly, it will land on the default plant spot. Honestly, these two lineups you will remember, right? Since we're on a side ascent, to all the sage players, you probably have placed this wall once, right? Here's a cool trick you can do. If you ever hear the enemies knifing the wall, simply go under heaven and shoot straight up. There's a pretty high chance you make a kill this way, just like Simon swipe. Well played my friend. To end this video, the winner of the battle pass is a casual gamer, congrats. Don't forget to submit your tricks in the load and the discord server and you might be the next winner. Shout out to everyone who submitted their tricks and I see you guys in the next one. Peace.